think, you know, this year is obviously tough because um, we missed the end of indoor at NCAAs, then we missed all of outdoor, all of cross country, all of indoor again. And then when we tried to get up to speed for our outdoor season, we didn't have the access to our um, indoor facility. So we did a good bulk of our training in the winter outside. Um, and, you know, for specific events, especially field events and sprints, that's just a, a really tough um, obstacle to overcome. But I give our kids credit. I mean, they just bundled up and they sucked it up. And I, I was like, use the analogy of Rocky Four, where he's like, you know, training in Russia with the, you know, the, um, I don't know what you could, the logs. And he's like, you know, climb, climbing mountains and stuff. I mean, that's like what they had to do. Oh, this is my dad, sorry. Um, so, you know, I think given the obstacles, which were many, these kids have done an unbelievable job. I also think it's tough, like the mask wearing is, is really difficult in our sport, right? Like um, with, with other sports, wins and losses is the ultimate um, sort of, you know, definer of how well you do but for us it's the quality of the performance so when you can't train at your best with a mask on and you can't compete at your best with a mask on it it presents some really unique challenges especially since us and one other league are the only um leagues in d3 that are you know requiring masks for competition um so it'll be a challenge like next week our kids running in the 10k so We've just said, like, look, if, if you can get rid of the mask at some point this season, God willing, uh, it'd be like training at altitude. And we've had to spin it in that way. And, um, you know, not by way of criticism, but we understand the risks of COVID and how difficult it's been. But I think our team has really risen to the challenge and been like super just like flexible and malleable to every change that's come their way. And, and that's been just like a pleasant surprise. I, I can't imagine how I would have faced those challenges as a student athlete myself. Um, but I think in terms of like team dynamics and how hard they're working and having to train, you know, in cold weather um, and snow on the ground. I mean, we measured a loop around the out, outside of the track when the track was covered with snow and they were running on the pavement like this half-baked loop around the track and it's like they were just doing it they were just doing what they needed to do with the hope of a season happening and so now that the season is happening I just can't tell you how grateful and appreciative we are that we can actually compete and um, sort of finish what we started last March I mean that was just such a a hard pill to swallow to be all the way in North Carolina and have literally the day before the meet, um, everything shut down. So, you know, we certainly didn't think it would be this long and that we'd lose three more seasons to this. Um, so the kids are anxious to compete, but um, cautiously optimistic. And I think one nice thing that's come out of COVID is that the freshman class, oddly enough, doesn't know any better and they've been really great. Like they just have adjusted like that. and. Um, it's a really nice group, a very talented group. And our juniors and seniors have been amazing in terms of keeping everybody positive and together. And we've had, because we have such a big squad, we've had to break into like a lot smaller cohorts than we would have normally practiced in. And, you know, having those cohort leaders and upperclassmen to sort of, you know, keep everybody together and keep everybody positive and working hard has really worked out well. So um, I give our kids a lot of credit. Um, and I give Tuss a lot of credit, to be honest. They've managed this pandemic so well. We're very lucky that we are here in a place like this that, you know, values our students' health and well-being above everything else.